A Sydney artist says he'll keep painting controversial burqa murals despite a community backlash. Police fear the artwork will be used by white supremacists, but the artist claims he just wants to spark debate. He says it's intended to incite debate, but instead, Sergio Redigale's anti burqa mural is sparking outrage. What are you doing? More that. hate. Excellent. All he's doing is polarising people and he's spreading xenophobia. The say no to Burka's artwork has been defaced twice since Mr Radigale painted it outside his new town studio on Monday. But he insists it isn't anti-Muslim. This has nothing to do with the good people of Islam. It has to do with a small minority of extremists. He says the feedback's been mostly positive and that his Muslim friends support him. And he actually stands up for my right to express myself as an Australian in Australia. But Muslim groups are outraged. This person uh, is abusing his right to free speech. Uh, certainly this type of uh, mural can incite harassment uh, of women who choose to wear the burqa. The Marrickville Council wants it gone and it seems locals agree. Probably not the right message. I don't think it should be there. I really don't. Police have warned Mr Radigale that white supremacist groups are planning to use his mural as part of their anti-Muslim protests. So to ensure his cause isn't hijacked, he's making some changes. It's our debate, talking about our issues. We can't let it be uh, taken over by anyone else. He'll paint a new mural this weekend. Melinda Newsofora, 10 News. The debate over the burqa is back. A controversial mural in Newtown caused a lot of trouble back in 2010 and the artist, a bloke by the name of Sergio Redigali, painted that now infamous Say No to Burqa's image. It was on the back of his studio. Now, it was vandalised at the time. There were calls for it to be taken down. But Sergio is back with a new mural. It's not about the burqa being banned completely. It's about banning the burqa while driving. Marrickville Council is not happy about this. They say they have no legal right to remove it, but they say it may jeopardise cultural diversity in the community. Sergio's on the line, the mural creator. Hello, Sergio. Hello, Ben. How are you? Good. You've done an experiment involving the burqa and a motor vehicle. Tell us about it. Correct. While uh, uh, videoing ourselves going into inappropriate locations while wearing burqas, so therefore men in burqas, going into female toilets and all sorts of places, it became really obvious during that event and events that you can't actually see why you're in these burkas. And I've been, I'm 49 now and I've been driving since I was 17. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to say I've got a good record and it would be very, very, very dangerous for this to allow to continue and to grow in numbers.
Okay, you said at the start of this interview about while doing another experiment about sending blokes in burkas into women's toilets. Well, can you explain what that was all about? Well, that'll come out in the next couple of months, uh, all the video sh shots of that. All right, can you just explain it to me now? What did you do? Well, it was just to show that while in these garments, literally all normal uh, social norms in the sense that a bloke shouldn't be walking into a female toilet, mm. you can get away with blue murder. So, you know, one of the guys was built like Lurch from the Adams family. Mm -hmm. You could see his muscles rippling in the back of the burqa. And we were loitering around in, in the city, and it became really obvious that no one had the guts to come up to people in these garments and actually question what we're doing. Okay. So and you had... That's another, you, you, you had issue you, in itself. You had blokes dressed in burkas going into girls' toilets. That's right, and I was one of them. Hmm. So, you know, the scenario is that I don't believe that we should wait for problems to occur. I think we should be mature enough as a society to actually say full-face coverings are uh, inappropriate. And literally, you could say, from the time we got onto the bus, all the normal security uh, devices that we have to protect ourselves as a okay. society. Just, just hang on there, Sergio. I've got a call from Rebecca. She wants to ask you something or make a quick comment, but I've got to be fast. Hello, Rebecca. All day, what we've been doing is going around the city, challenging uh, security protocols, going into banks, bathrooms, restaurants and so forth. Going into banks, bathrooms, going into banks, bathrooms, going into banks, bathrooms.
stop being so racist. It's not, okay. not racist. Stop being so racist. And stop it's not racist. What, what, what race are we against? What, 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 race, what race are we against? What race are you against? What race are we against? Are against? Are Tell us about the race. race. Tell, race. Name, name the race that we're against. Look at this. How about you go and make it? What race are we against? What race are you against? What race are you against? Tell us about the race. Name the race that we're against.
But the audience wasn't all that it seemed. No one's actually touched on the idea of security. Upsetting some. Violent crimes do occur by men dressed in burkas. How many? I don't know. How personally. many? How many? I don't know. How personally. many? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If I may, on to the matter of the burqa, uh, the, the proposition the burqa be banned. If you're out on a street walk, as you'll be doing during the election campaign, and a woman in a burqa approached you, would you react with some automatic trepidation? Uh, no, because I've met many such um, women, not just here but abroad, over a long period of time. And um, this is a diverse country, uh, Neil, and uh, people have different forms of dress. They have different forms of um, you know, cultural tradition. We've been living with these sorts of differences for the last couple of hundred years. Um, and on this uh, debate that I see in the Melbourne papers this morning, i just go back to a pretty basic point. I mean, uh, we at the Australian government level, I'm unaware of receiving any advice from any law enforcement agency about, you know, the, the need to take action of the type which has been recommended by um, Senator Bernardi. I guess the... the, the uh, look, I agree with you. I, I think... I don't think we need to ban it, but I can see the concern if a person in a burqa walks into a bank. Uh, I can't go into a bank wearing a motorcycle helmet or a balaclava if it's cold. Uh, do we perhaps need to look at degrees of reaction? Look, I mean, I'm just always attentive, um, Neil, to the advice that we get from the law enforcement authorities. I think we've just got to make a distinction between that on the one hand and just sort of playing populist politics on the other. Look, we're a pretty sensible country in Australia. We know how to get these balances right. You know, and um, I just think um, um, the diversity we've got in this country, people coming from all parts of the world, different things, the worst thing we can do is actually start you know, ganging up on particular groups within our country. I just think that's the wrong way to go. So you don't want to ban uh, it? You don't want to ban it? Well, the government policy is very unclear on this. It's, the government policy on this is very clear on this, which is that um, we've got nothing before us, so any law enforcement body which says that uh, this needs to be done. And that's our approach. We won't be doing this. Okay. Um, as far as Europe is concerned, what worries me about uh, the trend we're seeing there, I think the banning of the burqa uh, in, say, some European countries, that may be the quickest way to radicalise another generation of young women. Yeah. And I don't want to see that. That's it. Uh, I also look at what happened in the last century... <laughs> I also look at what happened in the last century in Europe and when countries in Europe felt the chill winds of economic fragility, they targeted people on the margin. Let's keep that in mind. Now let's come to Australia. I have yet to see a burqa in Benelong. You should be there more I've yet. <laughs> I was in the Baptist church at West Ryde on Saturday, actually, and very interestingly, the young people there um, actually hit the same kind of tolerant note that Mitch has just done. They're the same kind of people who are arguing that they should, you know, we should work to eliminate poverty in third world countries. They're the same kind of people who actually think that if we stand for liberal democratic values, then we don't have any divide about that. And if you want to look for a reason that Malcolm Fraser has quit the Liberal Party, you look at the kind of announcement that you have just made, because it is a basic tenet of liberalism oh, that you please. allow people freedom of expression, and I'm afraid one of those freedom of expressions is the freedom to dress as you wish. Okay. And I will just make... Excuse me, I will finish. Excuse me, I will make a final point, Corey. You referred um, to somebody uh, adopting the burqa and uh, attempting to rob a bank. I have not yet heard from one authority, one law enforcement authority, suggesting that the banning of the burqa would be an appropriate response to the, uh, to the incident that you have suggested. OK, I, I'm going to... You, you actually gave us a cue for our next question. It's a video question. You're watching Q&A.
Now, Roger, the Commonwealth Bank actually issued a statement today saying that they'd welcome any customers who wear bur burkas. It's a good thing. For me personally, it shows to me that they're doing their job. The chaser stunt that's exposed a flaw in Apex security. A fake motorcade, comedians posing as bodyguards and one dressed as terrorist leader Osama bin Laden managed to get within metres of the hotel where US President George W. Bush is staying. While the chaser gang went looking for laughs, police are seeing red. Did it all look official? Oh, they're pretty good. It's the Chasers' War on Apex. A comedy sketch and a security breach rolled into one. I thought that was really strange, and I hadn't seen that so far at Apex. Guys were running alongside the car like in a movie, so I, I grabbed the camera and just got a few shots of it. Channel 9 cameraman Rob Hopkins watched it unfold and captured this footage. Uh, I look across the road and this black limousine pulls up with two black four-wheel drives with a Canadian flag on the bonnet. And I just thought it was another convoy moving down. And, but the interesting thing was these security guys in dark suits get out of the car and literally start running down the road next to the convoy as it, as it pulls away off down Macquarie Street. They, they were very convincing, very convincing. It was only the fact that, the, the, that one of the guys nearly got his foot run over that it actually, uh, I thought, you know, this is not very professional. Um, but yeah, they were, they were quite convincing. In a city that's in virtual lockdown, it was a bold prank. $140 million has been spent on Apex security. That's $24 million every 24 hours. They made it look pretty easy. You know, this is the heaviest security this country's ever seen. And these guys just uh, rolled up in a, in a couple of black cars uh, with a flag, Canadian flag, on the, on, the, on the front of it, on the bonnet, and in they went. The fake motorcade ironically funded by the federal government through the ABC, made its way through a security checkpoint known as the Green Zone. Reporter Damien Ryan from National 9 News was watching on. I don't think they realised that uh, without their, their security passes that they were going to get as close as they did. And, uh, and, you know, and I think that they just thought, well, we've got to keep going with this. How close did they get to the President's Hotel, the Intercontinental? Oh, Ten metres. The team from the Chaser had just executed their grandest gag yet. Blokes, uh, let's have a look now at how it all unfolded. Talk us through it. OK, well, Osama likes to travel in style, yeah. right? So we made a do-it-yourself motorcade, cunningly disguised with this Canadian go, flag. Oh, yeah. It's a modern-day Trojan horse. Yeah, but there are a few hints we were fakes, like our official code, SFA. <laughs> yeah. I don't think motorcades have had runners since JFK, especially not ones with handy cam. But once we were rolling, nothing was going to stop us, except... Oh, fuck, we got a red light. Yeah, let him through. But yeah, the cops don't keep a sarm away. So watch this guy here. 
He stops the traffic and then waves us through. <laughs> that was amazing. No questions asked at all. On we roll. Right up to what they call the Ring of Steel. There it is. And didn't security jump on us? We stopping? No, you're fine. Oh. Yeah. Too much checking at that checkpoint. Yeah, so look, we were just walking on down, right on down to the red zone. Now that is the real no-go zone, but I'll tell you what, it's pretty, pretty relaxed in yeah. there. Look at this guy come here, his back to us. I don't know what he's looking at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, you know, the media said we got past a second checkpoint, but it, it wasn't really like a checkpoint. It was more like a guard of honour. Yeah. They're not too fast, are they? Yeah, now look, by this stage, it's become pretty bloody obvious the cops weren't going to stop us, so we decided to stop ourselves. Sorry. Sorry, I'm going to have to turn this around. We've got to go back. We've got to go back. OK. Now, uh, at this stage, we've got much further than we ever expected. I think that's fair to say. And all of a sudden, we're trying to turn around a motorcade right in front of George W. Bush's hotel. Chaz, I was a bit worried. Yeah. But as for the cops, well, they weren't so worried. We need to go back this way, OK? OK, turn around. Turn around. Thank you very much. Thank you, officers. Good work. Great work. Well, they did say the road was ours. Ours to do whatever we like, apparently. So, uh, look, we've been in that car for ages, mm -hmm. so we thought we might stretch our legs a little. Okay, okay. let's walk. Let's walk. Yeah, all right, let's go. Right. He's walking with me. All right, come on, let's go. And I think this is when they got a bit suspicious. I think so, yeah. Who are you? Officer Julian Morrow. Chase. VIP liaison. Okay. So here right. I am, Assam Bin Laden, Let's staying 10 leave. metres away That's from right. Bush's hotel. Oh, so what do they do? They arrest the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, hang on. Oh, there's some other guys coming to arrest you now. No, they're for me as well. No. Yeah. <laughs> Poor old Osama. No one likes Osama. Oh, they got him then. Uh, give it up for our apex super villains, Julie. <laughs> You're the Australian Protectionist Party. The reason I did it was to start a conversation. The reason I did it was to start a conversation. The reason I did it was to start a conversation.
The reason I did it was to start a conversation. The reason I did it was to start a conversation.